welcome to artificial intelligence foundation and application class uh, today we have the first class so we will start with introduction before going into the introduction of the course let us look into few of the administrative issue then we can look into the actual introduction of this course so uh, I'll be teaching this course primarily and there will be few guest lectures by Professor Parthu P. Chakraborty and few other faculty members as well. So uh, all of you know that uh, this course has been scheduled on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday. So Wednesday has a double lecture which is today now and uh, on Saturday we have an extra slot from 10.30 to 12. So this Saturday slot uh, we sometimes we will use that for our uh, discussion or any kind of lectures and few other purposes we will we are going to use these slots and that will be notified to you through email that for certain week we will have a uh, we'll have this uh, class <coughs> for this week we will have a class on Saturday and we'll be using this MS teams for our regular class the course will have a web page which will be located on the fact web page uh, which is given here you can uh, browse this page on a regular basis so I'll be the main instructor in this course and Professor P.P. Chakraborty will be sharing few of the lectures and there will be few guest lectures in this course as well. So Om Prakash, Punam and Subhajit they, uh, they will actually help me in the TA purpose. The books that I'll be following in this course is primarily the first one Artificial Intelligence a Modern Approach by Russell Norvig and there are few other books which we'll be sharing you uh, during the course of the lectures and there will be few papers will maybe referred to you and that you have to explore. The primary step is the first one by the book Russell and Norvig. So, which is a, one of the famous book in this domain. One of the major questions that you have for the evaluation, tentatively what we have planned that we are going to have four to six number of tests and this test will be kind of topic wise. So, once we finish one of the topic, maybe we will arrange a test and that will carry 60 percentage of the weightage and this test can have multiple choice questions can have subjective questions and you have to answer those question in an online portal and for subjective question you may have to write a paragraph on the online portal sometimes it may be the situation that you have to write the solution on a paper you have to scan the solution and you have to upload the solution on on certain portal that we will intimate to you from time to time depending on the cases so that will be <coughs> one of the major uh, part for the tests <coughs> so the number will depends between four to six as of now and we will update you uh, as we progress in this course the second uh, part which consists of around 40 percent weightage as of now we will have two assignments these assignments have to be done in groups and this can have maximum of four students in a group and mm, so not more than four maximum four so uh, we are not going to allow any group with five students so and you have to form your own group so for these assignments what we are planning as of now uh, is one of the topics uh, you will be given a topics and for which you have to prepare a video of around 15 20 minutes on that topic 
so one of the stuff that we'll be looking into some of the survey on ai topics we will provide few topics during uh, uh, during this course during this semester and you have to prepare a video of 15 20 minutes and you have to present that stuff so you have to prepare slides and you have to make a video you have to upload it in youtube and you have to share the link and and there will be few other things that we will elaborate later when we come into that phase so one of the topic will be survey on the ai stuff the other assignments will be uh, similar kind of stuff but it will be ai in your domain because in this course there are um, students from different disciplines so we would like to uh, see that how you can actually apply ai in your domain so you have to study your domain and i am pretty sure that you are familiar with your domain so uh, you have to explore uh, a few problems so you can actually um, solve through ai based techniques the techniques that we, have, we will learn in this course and uh, of course this is the video that you have to crea uh, create and you have to upload in youtube and we will elaborate more on the modality parts as we progress so with this we come to uh, the actual introduction part uh, so let us look into uh, the ai now now the first question that everybody will be having like what is ai and everyone has that question in mind so ai actually is described in many ways i have listed out few of the uh, definitions or few of the ideas that people have suggested so one of the early definition is something like it is the science and engineering of making intelligent machine so that was given by john mccarthy <coughs> if you look into the wikipedia then it says that ai is intelligence demonstrated by machine in contrast to the natural intelligence displayed by humans there is the definition from the wikipedia the from the famous book of russell and norby AI attempts not just to understand but also to build intelligent entities and another guy has described the artificial intelligence as follows so it is that activity devoted to making machine intelligent and intelligence is that quality that enables an entity to function appropriately with the foresight in its environment now if you look into uh, this set of definition then one thing is definitely common that it it will be kind of a intelligent system that we cannot avoid so <coughs> primary thing is that uh, we want to we want that a system should be intelligent whatever the human being can do we expect the computer can do the same stuff so it may not perform to that extent but we want to make the computer to be an smart enough intelligent enough so that it can think like a human being and it can respond in that manner so def so what we can in a very concise manner what we can think is like an building an intelligent system or a system that can behave intelligently so that is the broad idea when we say the artificial intelligence so it is an inanimate object that can act like probably like a human being <coughs> now if you want to uh, look into a deeper one then uh, people have suggested in many ways like this 
intelligent agent should be act like a human being so that is one of the probably the requirement and we have a, a interesting stuff the turing's test <coughs> so uh, when um, a certain intelligent agent can pass a turing's test then probably we can say that it acts like a human being so what is the turing test so it's something like this as follows so there is a guy c it ask some questions it writes those questions on a pen and paper and then it provides to one to the computer and one to the a uh, human being but it does not know which one is computer and which one is uh, the human being now it receives some in response from the human being and this uh, computer now if the person is unable to distinguish let's say this a prime and the b prime the responses that c has received then it fails to identify which one is coming from the computer a prime or the b prime <coughs> then probably we can say that the computer is behaving like a human being because we will be able, we will not be able to identify that stuff <coughs> now a second set of thoughts is something like this it should be it should think like a human being so uh, so which is mostly depends on the modeling of the cognition part or the cognitive modeling now what you need to do or if you if you if your intelligent system you expect that it will think like a human being then probably you need to know how the brain actually human brain actually functions so that can be done through introspection psychological experiment brain imaging and many other process so if you can model a system in that manner then probably uh, and then you replicate that stuff probably it can think like a human being <coughs> the next is you uh, it should think in the rational manner so when we have some information given from those information we should be able to extract out meaningful stuff or we should be able to conclude certain things and that process should be Uh, logically derived and we should be able to reason that kind of stuff so it is kind of a right thinking and there should be irrefutable reasoning process so it's the laws of thought okay. so you can think it's kind of a logic in a very very simple sense then another requirement is that the agent the system that you are building should act in a rational manner so uh, it should achieve the best outcome in presence of uncertainty and that is the best expected outcome so if i built an intelligent system then it should interact with the environment <coughs> and depending on the system environment it should act in an intelligent manner so that it can capture the right stuff <coughs> now there are lot of interesting thing that people have proposed so here is an interesting thing so which is known as chinese room argument so what is that so uh, suppose the artificial intelligence has succeeded in constructing a computer that behaves as if it understand chinese so this is the system that i have built let's say or somebody has built <coughs> and it can understand chinese so somebody will provide the chinese character so it takes chinese character as input 
by following the instruction of a computer program it produces a chinese character as output <coughs> and <coughs> that is the situation so i give some input i am getting some output and this is the system that i have developed now the question is that suppose the computer performs its task comfort and comfortably it passes the turing test the test that we have described in the previous slide now if it pass this test then what we can conclude so there are two scenarios one thing is that this system this system understand chinese and then it produce the stuff that can be one option or the other option is that it has enough data stored here and whenever it gives it gets some input it <coughs> whenever it gets some input it just look up somewhere and it produces the output so <coughs> and it pass the giving test so these two are the scenarios that can happen then <coughs> then the question is does the machine literally understand chinese so in the first scenario if it really understand the stuff and it produce the output we can say it is the form of a strong ai and if it's merely simulating the ability to understand chinese that means it has the huge data and it just does the look up and it produce the output then we can say it is kind of a weak ai so in various form it can actually come so let us look into the problem space like when we try to build any system so basically our main motivation is to solve some problem and we want to build a kind of a intelligent agent and so if you look into the problem space then a set of problems exist which we can actually solve pretty easily so one of the very simple example that i can provide find the maximum of n numbers and i am pretty sure that every one of you know how to solve this problem so this problem can be described formally what does it mean and the computers can solve it pretty easily so that is one class of problem the second class of problem probably we can categorize in this way the problems are intellectually challenging and <coughs> uh, but easy for the computers for example if you look into the chess problem <coughs> then it is uh, intellectually challenging and computers can probably give you the best move uh, to a great extent that we know and this kind of problem like traveling salesman problem where you have a set of cities and uh, you know the distance between each cities and the salesman has to visit all the city exactly once and he should visit all the cities in such a way that it covers minimum distance because that is the most efficient one now this kind of problems are ch intellectually challenging but i can use computer or i can describe the uh, first of all i can uh, describe the pro problem formally and then i can uh, solve the problem on a computer so i have some methodology through which i can solve the problem maybe i need a very high computing resources but still i can solve that one the next category probably we can say that problems which are easy for human being but relatively tough for computers so one such example probably what we can say uh like object identification or given an image you have to identify the object or maybe you have to recognize some face or there are many um, other problems now for this kind of problem one of the interesting thing is that 
a human being can solve the problem pretty easily because if you show me a face then probably i can easily say that it's a human face and uh, uh, and probably i may recognize that face also now describe that problem in a formal manner is also not very easy uh, in this kind of scenario so <coughs> so there is another class of problem <coughs> the next probably we can say that the problems that cannot be solved by computers like <coughs> detection of infinite loop in a program so it is kind of an undecidable problem and uh, so so we are not looking into that kind of stuff in this course we will be mostly looking into the second category of the problem and maybe the third category of problem third category of problem is mostly require your machine learning deep learning based solution and in this course we'll mostly focus on the second category of problem where we how to build an intelligent system that can solve those kind of problems now if you look into the application domain of ai it has a large domain where you can actually apply like computer vision vlsi design natural language processing transportation vehicle routing airline and train scheduling and many other stuff that you can read out this slide so in any topics that you can take uh you can actually apply ai based methodology for example if you look into the computer vision like uh how you can find out the face uh, can you track somebody can you identify certain things on the image like if you have a surveillance camera then uh, identifying any wrong doing can you track and many other interesting applications can be developed around that kind of part <coughs> so the interesting fact here is that we have many different problem domains but we'll be solving all those problem using a few set of techniques so we will try to abstract out this domain stuff and we we will try to um, build a model uh, to solve these problems in an abstract manner so that the same methodology can be applied in the different um, problem set so the broad techniques that will be looked into in this uh, course is at the search logic constant satisfaction planning probability reasoning and <laughs> there are other strategy like machine learning which can be symbolic or logical or statistical or the deep learning so we will not look into this category of problems in this course so we'll be mostly focusing on this part of the stuff <coughs> so just to give you a broad overview what is the scenario of artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning and deep learning so ai encompasses everything machine learning is subset of that part deep learning is a special subset of machine learning which uses a special kind of technique mostly it's the neural network based methodology that uh, that uh, using which it solves the problem but ai in general encompasses lot of different stuff uh in its domain so now let us take a look that what kind of problem it can actually address so so let's look into a search problem uh so let's say we have a factory that produces n different products <coughs> uh using m different components so we have n different products m different components and product n nth product requires sn number of mth components 
and each component cause uh, has a cost of cm and there are limited number of components let's say lm number of components you have for the mth item and for every product that you build can earn a revenue of cn so the thing is you are given uh, uh, a set you, you need to develop a set of products for which you need different components and to build each product you need different uh, kinds of components and each product has can earn you some revenue <coughs> and there are limited number of components for each of the items now the thing is given a set of demands for products what is the best way to fulfill such demands <coughs> so 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 that means i want to maximize my revenue so I, if if somebody has given me uh, uh, the demands of the products that i need this 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 then how i should fulfill so that i can maximize my revenue so this is a problem probably occurs in many domains so let's say if i replace the products uh, like uh, mm, uh, white milk dark chocolate <coughs> and the components uh, uh, are the milk butter and vanilla so let's say it's a food industry that prepares this kind of chocolate and it requires this kind of components then what way i should combine so that i can maximize my revenue similarly if i replace the product with ring pendant and earrings then and the components are gold silver diamond then i can apply the stuff in jewelry industry also if i look into sulfuric acid aqua regia sulfur chlorine nitric acid maybe i can solve the similar problem in chemical industry so <coughs> the underlying problem here is a simple search problem that you would like to address and if we can solve this one then we can apply in, in, in different domain as well <coughs> then the other category of problem where we use logic here the logic means the reasoning about certain facts a simple thing i can say like like uh, all men are mortal socrates is man so therefore socrates is mortal so if i say this uh, first two sentences so i knowledge so if i say this thing all men are mortal socrates is a man so this is my knowledge base and then i am concluding that socrates is mortal so it's kind of a logical analysis that i am performing and probably that logic is correct and we can uh, answer certain stuff now the thing is if we if we have a similar kind of knowledge base like there are five houses the englishman lives in the red house the spaniard owns the dog coffee is drunk in the green house the ukrainian drinks tea and lot of other facts and then if i ask the question who drinks water who owns the zebra now it is not so trivial immediately to answer these queries by looking into these facts but when i talked about the other example like all men are mortal and socrates is a man so therefore socrates is mortal so that is easily understandable so when we have this kind of scenario this big set of knowledge base and we would like to conclude certain things we need a proper methodology through which we can actually solve this problem now this kind of problem can be mapped to a logic problem which you will see in this course and there are many such problems 
<coughs> and uh, what the interesting thing is that all these kinds of problem can be mapped to a logic problem very easily and once we have this stuff we can we have certain techniques how to derive this conclusion how to answer these queries and we can proceed in that manner so this is a famous zebra puzzle so you will find some variant of this maybe if you are interested you can look into the net what what does it actually has the second another category of problem that we will be looking into is constant satisfaction problem so <coughs> so let us look into the problems first so let's say we look into food nutrition so the question is like this is it possible for a student to eat at several food joints at KGP campus and achieve the basic requirements of balanced diet each type of food has some basic nutrition value and maximum amount of food intake by a student is limited <coughs> so so this problem uh, can be modeled in the constant satisfaction way because it specify certain kind of things certain kind of restriction that you have to follow and there is a way using which we can model this problem so this is just one of them let's look into another problem so given a world map and k number of colors goal is to color the country such that no two countries that share the boundary have the same color so again this problem can be mapped into constant satisfaction so if you look into the first two problems that has been food nutrition and the map coloring uh, it's in the first appearance they look really different kinds of problem but we can apply a similar kind of methodology for these kind of problems so that is one of the interesting thing of this kind of stuff so let's look into another problem so which is known as the jobs of scheduling so what is the problem so consider car assembly consisting of the task <coughs> install axle front and back affix all four wheels tighten nuts for each wheels affix hub caps and inspect the final assembly now each of these task you have to schedule but the each of these task requires some time and the interesting thing is that the task are not independent they are dependent because once you fix everything then probably you can go for the final check because you cannot inspect the final assembly first then you can install the axle and so on and so forth so now the question that can be asked like is it possible to finish the job within a given time t say so this setup operation some things you can do in parallel something you have to depend on others then how you can actually schedule the stuff so that you can finish the overall job in a given time bound manner so if you look into all these three problems they are very very simple problems and these problems can be addressed by a certain kind of techniques which is known as the constant satisfaction that we will see and there are wide variety of problems which can be mapped into this one and one of the important thing that real life problem will have more number of constant not as simple as this that i have been given in the example so there is another interesting problem planning where ai can actually help so let us look into the problem so three missionaries and three cannibals are on one side of the river that they wish to cross a boat is available that can hold at most two people and at least one and you must never leave a group of missionaries outnumbered by cannibals on the same bank so uh, this is the situation so 
what you need to do is you need to devise a plan so that uh, you can um, uh, you can transfer this missionaries and cannibal from one side to the another one <coughs> so <coughs> so what what you need to do probably like you will first send uh, you will probably first send uh, one missionaries and one cannibal first to on this part and then you bring back uh, one of them and then you devise a certain kind of plan and then you transfer all of those things so how you can devise this plan so which is an interesting problem to address and through ai we can actually address this kind of problem so this is a famous problem known as missionaries and cannibals problem and there is another version called jealous husbands problems you can look into the internet for more information this kind of problems are actually used in many scenarios like if you want to develop a chat bot then probably uh, you have to plan in that way uh, certain kind of stuff you can plan and then you can ask those questions even for risk management robotics uh, these are actually used in <coughs> uh, this kind of stuff the other problems like when we talk about the reasoning like uh, the normal logic we have a knowledge base and we try to reason out certain things like the zebra problem that we have seen there are situation in the practical situation where we cannot claim the knowledge base with a hundred percent guarantee and many times fa uh, the information comes with some kind of a probability information so which has high probability but it may not happen always so <coughs> so the thing is if we try to address those issue or if we need a methodology to address those issue then how we can actually solve the problem so again we want to do reasoning but in presence of uncertainty so let's say look into this example so let's say I am looking for a uh, weight grass and two events can actually cause the grass to be wet so an active sprinkler or rain so if there is a rain then uh, then grass will be wet and if there is no rain then if I run on sprinkler then the grass will be wet now if I want to and everything has some probability like if so if it rains if it has a high probability then i will not uh, run my sprinkler <coughs> and uh, if there is a less chance of rain then probably my uh, uh, running of sprinkler will be high so if i have that information then probably i will be able to reason something like this what is the probability that it would rain given that we wet the grass so <coughs> so this kind of probabilistic analysis and this is a very very simple example and there can be many more complex example like if you look into an automotive system which has lot of components that are working together then if certain things is not functioning well with the every every component has some probability with which it can function perfectly then what is the overall probability that the system will function or if i observe the system is not function properly then <coughs> uh, what is the cause that something has gone wrong what is the probability that something has gone wrong so that kind of reasoning is actually we do often here it's a just a basic example in that probabilistic reasoning <coughs> so if you look into that step so uh, like if 
if it is uh, sprinkler is on and the rain is on or rain happens then you have the high probability that your grass is wet and many kind of queries that you can answer many probabilities many conditional probabilities that you can determine from this stuff now if you look into the real life applications of ai so you will find uh, many such applications like if you have uh, if you are from chemistry or the cryogenic <coughs> then uh, uh, probably the organic chemical synthesis the structure component that you can actually see and how you can come up with new structure which will have certain kind of properties that you can actually uh, uh, in that domain you can actually AI based technique if you are from uh, uh, industrial system engineering like supply chain management jobs of scheduling vehicle routing uh, there you can actually apply AI based technique a very simple thing like many of you are familiar with Ola and Uber uh, stuff you get so many requests and you process all those requests and you try to optimize certain things and you have to apply some AI based methodology to address that kind of problem instrumentation if you want to make a smart sensor like you have some sensors but if you can put some kind of a intelligence to that it will be always good so those things are actually important thing electrical engineering there are a lot of problems like unit commitment or if you want to have a demand side management or if you want to schedule your appliances in such a way so that your peak is minimized or if you have a variable pricing model then how you can schedule your appliances such that you pay less to the grid and if you have renewable stuff then how are you going to use renewable whether you are going to put the renewable energy directly into the battery and use at a later point of time or you use it that stuff immediately and there are many other problems that you can think of agriculture like corp soil monitoring weather forecast all are pretty important problem and ai based techniques is very much required for that robotics is a very important field though i have listed it for mechanical but it can encompasses many things so it requires electronics it requires electrical knowledge it requires cs knowledge and um, instrumentation knowledge and there are a lot of things you can uh, uh, do that stuff urban planning smart city planning will be come into the architecture stuff drug discovery diagnostics maybe the biotechnology people will be interested mathematics people may be interested in formal verification or proving some kind of a theorem <coughs> uh, finance risk management risk assessment for detection in credit card transaction many kind of applications you can actually think of and you can actually build all those things uh, law uh, you need to do logical analysis the example that we have seen so how you can derive the conclusion in a formal manner in a with a support of irrefutable uh, reasoning kind of stuff so with this i will stop and probably you have heard of this thing already artificial intelligence is the new electricity uh, and probably you will find every domain where you want to apply or you will find some problem there is an applications of ai in that domain to make that system smart or intelligent or to come up with some kind of a rational agent that can serve the purpose for the human being thank you very much